but I learned from that and I continually focused. And what I realized is the more that I focused on what was working and the more that I turned down the volume on what wasn't working, that's when things started to speed up and ease was the key. When I gave up the fight, when I gave up the struggle, when I let that go, that is when things turned around. All right, guys, in this episode, we are going to dive deep into the secret sauce to six-figure success. I'm Dr. Shauna, and here we go with our next episode of Six Figure Health Coach. I am so excited to share this bit with you. This is the reason why when people have all the stuff, the websites, the online modules, the niche, everything, they have all the tools, but yet still not successful. This is the missing link. And it's also the missing link why when people have none of those things, they actually can be successful. So what we're going to talk about, I, I often tell my clients, my health coach clients, the difference between you and six figures is the six inches between your ears. So it is all about mindset, but we're going to go deeper into that. So we'll see how far we can get. You stick with me here on these episodes. We're going to dive into this uh, as time goes on. But what I know for sure is that you can be, do, have anything. But what we think about, we bring about whether we like it or not. And most of us are thinking about the fact that we don't have clients, that this isn't working or that this is a struggle because that's what we're seeing. And we just get more of what we're seeing. But on the other hand, when we are crystal clear on our niche, we're on a mission, it means something to us that drives us forward, it feels good, it feels soul satisfying, it feels fun. Well, now we're going in that positive forward direction. So I often talk about this Be Good For You Awakening Map and Awakening Elevator in my books. So check it out. If you don't have a copy yet, head over to drshauna.com and get a free copy of either Free to Heal, The Nine Steps to a Successful Soul Satisfying Health Coaching Practice, and also grab a copy of Six Figure Health Coach, The 12-Step Blueprint to Doing the Significant Soul Satisfying Work You Love. You can get them on Amazon, but I am more than happy to give you a free copy because it is important that we get this information out there. But I dive into this in a uh, visible way. You can see I, I got a diagram of this. And I talk about, let's start from the beginning and the basics. You can move towards ease or you're moving away from ease and you're moving to dis-ease. This is why this tool that I'm going to share with you is important for your clients too. So everything you want is in the forward, positive, upward direction. With me so far? So your point B is your pure wellness. Who you really are is pure wellness. And we can tap into that, taking baby steps in the positive direction of what we want. So that is a core message. I'm going to say it over and over and over again. And we're going to move away from dis-ease. Now, when we resist that, we go in the opposite direction and all of that resistance creates dis-ease. It slows us down. It makes us feel bad. I want to cover this topic from a, a, a few different angles, and but definitely pick up the books and definitely hop on a call uh, with me if you would like. You can head over to drshauna.com. There should be a way to reach out because this is, this is the secret sauce. This is it. This is why it eventually worked. People saw me struggle and then they saw me successful and they thought one led to the other. It did not. I finally gave up the struggle and allowed the ease and the flow. So when my dad had his massive stroke and the doctors said that he absolutely could not survive, what they were saying was medically correct. I am a medical doctor. I was a radiologist for years. I was a medical doctor for 25 years. So I knew that there was not anything that they could do. But I also knew that who we really are is pure wellness. And we can tap into that taking baby steps in with positive focus in the direction that we want. So 
when he had his stroke, I took a one-way ticket back home to be with him. And I did my absolute best to not focus on the ashen, bedridden description that I had just been given by my brother as to how my dad was. And instead, I focused on the vibrant, strong man that I had remembered. And initially, there's a knee-jerk reaction. I can't feel ecstatic or happy to hear that my dad's not going to survive. That I just, I do not have access to that. But I knew how important our focus was. And so I could find neutral. I could focus on my pillow or uh, a mug or water as I washed my hands. I could focus on that and at least get to neutral. And from there, I could feel hopeful. And from there, I was inspired to grab a book, The Brain's Way of Healing and The Brain's Way of Change Itself by Dr. Norman Doidge. If any, you have someone in your life that is suffering from uh, a neurologic condition, I highly recommend that book. And that is one of the books that I read on the plane ride back home. I will cut to the chase and I will say that what actually happened, even though they said there was nothing that they could do and they shipped him off to the community hospital to die, what actually happened is he walked out of there on his own two feet back home with my mom in 35 days. And he just celebrated his 87th birthday last week. So that's been five years ago now and he is still going strong. So that is the power of that positive focus. Now, what I had to do is focus on what I could do, what was working, and turn down the volume on anything that was not as I wanted it to be. So when my brother would, he's non-medical, and he would say, bring up his phone, and he would say, it says here that in strokes, what usually happens is, and I grabbed his phone and I put it face down and I said, do you want what usually happens? We are, I'm, I can tell you what usually happens and I want no part of that. And so we were starting to choose a different thing. Now, I didn't say it was wrong. I don't deny any of that. That is actual fact. That's right. It's like, do you want to be right or do you want to be healthy? Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? You have to ask yourself that. So that is some an, a reality that I did not want to have happen. So we got to turn down the volume of it. So I focused on what we could do. I went, could he, I, could he feel his finger? Could he feel, could he feel me touch his finger? Could he move his finger? Could he eventually move his toes? I focused on what was working. We put a Corvette calendar in his room in the hospital. And every night I would take a little post-it note, tear it off and put on our win of the day, like off oxygen, IV out, able to, to, um, eat, able to uh, stand, best day of my life, the day he was able to stand, I got to tell you, hands down, the best day, and able to take some steps and able to walk all the way out of there. But we kept focusing on what he could do. There was an enormous amount that he could not do, and especially at the beginning. And that's where most people focus. Most people, most people, Think about it, focus on what they can't do. They focus on the money that's not in their bank account. They focus on the clients they don't have. They focus on the, the health they don't have. They focus on the disease that they have been given, what the tests show. They focus on what they don't want and they get more of it. On a subtle, on a smaller level, if my computer is going haywire or if I'm frustrated or if I'm overwhelmed, I'm like, get ready. There's a whole heap more where that came from. So I have to find a way to pivot and focus on something that I do want. Having water. I keep water handy all the time. I can feel how good it is. For those of you listening in on podcasts, I'm about to take a, a sip here. Mm. So good. So good. So good, that water. So good. I can focus on how clean that is, how blessed I am to be able to have water. I can take a big breath in. So good. There's an abundance of air. I can take in as much air as I want. 
so good. And I don't have to hold on to it. I can let it go because there's more. There's an infinite amount of air that I get to breathe. So blessed, so lucky. When I focus on the fact that I can breathe, when I focus on the fact that my heart is beating for me, circulating my blood flow around, when I focus on the things that are working and that I do like, I get more of them. So in the sea of infinite possibilities, we get to drive our car, our vehicle, ourselves in the direction of our focus. A few episodes ago, I talked about guarding your focus, how that was so critical to success. That's it. You want to guard your focus. So if you're focused on what's not working, um, disease, despair, destruction, that's where you're headed. And the more you focus on it, the faster you go there. On the other hand, if we focus on some little thing that is working for us, like our breath, like our that we can drink water, that the there is grass outside, that there is a sun that comes up every day. If you focus on what is working, that if you can, you know what, my dog, my buddy, I had a yellow lab buddy, he got me through the most challenging phase as I transitioned from medicine, from being a medical doctor as the sole income earner for our family of six, as I figured out, and it was not easy, how to create a successful health coaching practice while being a mom of four, while working crazy hours and having no time to do it. That was a feat. It took me a long time. Doesn't need to take you a long time. I've already made all the mistakes, so you don't have to. So tune into these episodes. But as one of the things, one of my key ingredients, there were several, but one of them was my dog, Buddy. And he was pure love. I could just look at him and his tail would just thump, 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 thump. And he rode me all the way through that a whole journey because I could look at him and just ooze love unconditionally all over him. And that is that level. When you come from love on any subject instead of fear, when you come from love, whoa, get ready. It's about to get good. That's where it is. That's where your ideal clients are. They're up there at love. So when you focus on the sea of possibilities, when you focus on that direction that is working and that you do like, and the more that you guard your focus and only focus in that positive direction, you go faster and faster and faster there. One of my clients, Rachel, which I know I'll interview, she was the first one that I helped reach six figures. One day I remember she had recently gone to Hawaii with her husband. She came back and she got four clients in one day. And they came to her. I mean, what? But she was so high flying. Marianne did that as well. Went to St. Lucia with her boyfriend and came from love and came back to have a client want to work with her. That's why I keep this easy button on my desk. That was easy. It's not spamming people. It's not blanketing out millions of people with your messages. That's not it. It's coming heart to heart, soul to soul, lining up with your soul's purpose. You are the faucet for the divine waters to flow. You want to come from love and ooze love. Every day before I do calls with people, I always say, you know, please place those I am meant to serve in front of me and may I see them clearly and may we connect for the most joyful experience. Please place those I am meant to serve in front of me. They're out there. If I can tap into and come from love, I'm going to have a lot easier time than by putting a lot of resistance in my path and on my journey. So how do you do that? How do you face overwhelming odds? My journey was not easy. I know it looks to the outside that it was successful doctor, boom, successful health coach. It was not at all like that. 
but I had a burning desire. I really, really want to help people live their longest, healthiest, happiest lives. But in that journey from point A to point B, there was a time being, it was a little rocky, couldn't even afford toilet paper. That was an embarrassing moment. It was not good. It wasn't smooth sailing, but I learned from that and I continually focused. And what I realized is the more that I focused on what was working and the more that I turned down the volume on what wasn't working, that's when things started to speed up and ease was the key. When I gave up the fight, when I gave up the struggle, when I let that go, that is when things turned around. There's only one person who is responsible for your success. And that is you. But when we go to blame anybody, the doctors, the, the, the boss, the economy, the government, the climate, the weather, the location, the city, the spouse, the family, when you go to blame someone else for your lack of success, you give all of your power away and it is a lie. Your true power comes from within. You can do this, but you got to tap into this. And the way that you do is remembering that who you really are is pure wellness. Who you really are is pure love. When you line up with your inner self that is pure love, wow, watch out. That's when it gets so fun, so soul satisfying. And you get to want what you want. And you don't have to like things that you don't like. That's not what we're talking about. Nobody likes to have an empty bank account. Nobody likes to fight with people. Nobody likes to have diagnoses. But we can choose our focus. We do have free will. And we do have free will over our thought. And our thought and our emotions are everything. One of the reasons I was able to be successful with my dad, and I did a lot of messages after my dad was successful, because we've had a lot of family deaths as well, and tragic ones as well. So what I know for sure, death is not a punishment. We're all going to get there. So as a doctor, I think I was kind of ingrained that our whole mission was to prevent death, which, you know, we're kind of setting ourselves up for failure because we can't do that. So that's not what we're talking about. That's not, that's not the mission, but to have people live their longest, healthiest, happiest lives. Well, I'm all about that. Now, one of the reasons why it worked for my dad is because he was so far gone that everybody ignored him and I didn't have to fight with anyone. Nobody thought it, not anything would work. So I didn't have to explain anything and they just left him to die. So I could do everything. I gave it everything I got, nutrition, adaptogens, mobility, neuroplasticity, uh, a medical device, you name it, proteins, healthy protein, lots of things that I did. I did everything. I did everything. But it started with my thoughts and my emotions and coming from love rather than fear and being detached from outcome. We get too fixated on a certain thing. I did a one-way ticket there and I was not coming home until he walked out of there on his own two feet. That was it. And I didn't know if it was going to take a month, a year, 10 years. That was my mission. I'm not coming back until we've got that done. And it was faster than I could ever have imagined. So it's easy for people to say, oh, good. Well, you only had to spend 35 days there, 24, seven, well, 12 hours a day uh, at the hospital, eight days. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't know we were going to be, have that turnaround. So as you go and create a successful six-figure health coaching practice, it's a heck of a lot easier than having someone who has had such a massive stroke that there is no viable option for him to survive and have him survive. That's a medical miracle. That's a whole level of belief and results that defy logic. So a six-figure health coaching practice, not that hard, not that hard. But what we have to do is get out of our own way. What do we mean by that? We mean turn down the volume on that I can't do this, that it's not working, and you get to choose. Do you want to do it? Great book by Seth Godin, The Dip. You know, we start off excited about something, and then as it gets real, 
we kind of get into this dip. And he says, don't quit in the dip. Keep going through and keep focusing forward. And away you go. I grew up in Manitoba, Canada, where there's a lot of snow and a lot of ditches that can get filled with snow. And if you are stuck in the snow, don't go back and forth, back and forth. You're going to dig it deeper. You want to move forward, get some traction and keep moving forward. So Seth Godin says, don't quit in the dip. The time to quit is before you start. So if you don't want to be a health coach and you don't want to do this work, quit right up front. There's lots of great learning here. Still tune in. We love you. Still tune in. And there's lots of great stuff to improve your health and the health of your loved ones. But if you're serious about becoming a health coach, keep moving forward in the forward direction. Do your best not to go back there. Nothing you want is back there in fear. It's not there. You don't have to analyze it over and over and over and stay stuck. You want to keep moving forward. If it feels good, you're going in the right direction. If you feel joy, you're going in the right direction. Learn to tap in and trust yourself and know that ease is the key. So if you feel like, well, I just haven't suffered enough. I should have to do struggle a little bit more for this to work. That's not it. That's not it. So it in the sea of infinite possibilities and all of them are open to you, you want to get the cleanest channel that you can and focus in the direction of what you do want and what is working. And that is when the magic happens. Come from love, not fear. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. It's not real. That's not who you really are. It is normal to encounter those things. And that is good because that is contrast. Now we know what we do want. Deepak Chopra taught a lot about this too. You know, when you're hungry, you know you want food. So when you have lack of money, you know you want more money. When you have a lack of love, you know more keenly that you want more love. So the thing though is that is within you. We go looking out there for it. It's all in here. So clean up your thoughts, clean up your emotions. And when you get used to, that's why I talked a little bit about that financial thermostat. We all have our financial thermostat set at a certain point. And so I'll often ask people, you know, how much are you accustomed to making? So if they've never made six figures before, it's going to be a bigger deal. It's not a big, it's overcomable, but it's something that we want to work on their mindset. If they've already made six or seven figures in another vehicle or doing something else, they know six figures is no big deal. And when you line up with that six figure CEO mindset, it's no big deal. It's just, you're doing what you're doing. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is where I love to dive into this aspect of things about brain waves and uh, emotions and thought work. It's really, really powerful. And all of our dis-ease is really when we're holding ourselves apart from that. So I've got lots of tools and tips that I love to share. Uh, if you want to hop on a call at some point, uh, if I still offer that, uh, you can go to drshauna.com. And uh, those are some of the tripping points. That's, that's the big value that people that work with me get is we can kind of clean up some of that thought work uh, so that you can allow the success, the abundance, the amazing difference uh, that is really there waiting for you. So with that, I want you to have a fantastic week. Uh, get ready. We're going to be sharing some amazing health coaches. I'm going to have them share some of their work. I'm going to interview them. I love hearing interviews back and forth. You've been hearing me as a monologue on several of these episodes, uh, but I'm going to be excited to share and highlight some of these amazing health coaches and the incredible work that they're doing and how they came to do it. They're great tips. So uh, tune in, maybe you'll get some guidance on what you can do with some of your clients. I know that it is um, of tremendous value to see how other people are getting great results for their clients. So with that, have a fantastic week. And of course, most of all, be good for you. Mm -hmm.